but there are certain techniques that a photographer might not know to, to capture specific views, angles, motion through videography. And what really brought us to Michael was his editing expertise. Because yeah, we might have great little snippets, but oh my goodness, how do we put them together into a coherent story in 60 seconds to tell all that happened in four days of a giant conference with everything from exhibit halls to testimonial interviews to people speaking on stage with keynotes and all the networking and everything that happens. How do you tell that in 60 seconds with cool music? You ask Wolfgang Media. <laughs> Welcome to B2B Synergy, the Power Partner USA podcast, your exclusive guide to discovering the potential of B2B partnerships. I'm Alan Armijo, owner of Power Partners USA Business to Business Introduction and Referral Service. Our members are B2B professionals who team up to provide each other repeat referral business or collaboration. Today's episode dives into marketing, specifically the collaborative world between videography, photography, and marketing agencies. Our guests are no strangers to working and collaborating together as power partners. I'm happy to introduce Michael Bao, owner of Wolfgang Media, and Lana Farfan from Caught in the Moment Photography. Welcome, Mike and Lana. How are you doing? Great. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Alan. Appreciate it. Appreciate Good. being on your show. Good. Thanks. There, there's a lot of professional experience between us. We've known each other for a while. Can can you explain your services and what you're focusing or prior to, prioritizing now, Mike? Sure. Yeah. So I've been doing video for a couple decades now, if I really add it up. And, uh, you know, done all sorts of video through the years. Um, have done work with like the History Channel back in the day where we did a lot of traveling and things like that. But really kind of focusing on corporate videos and nonprofits are probably our, you know, biggest target audience, biggest target market, and really enjoy working locally if possible. You know, being in Long Beach, really enjoy supporting local nonprofits and business if, if possible, although we branch out quite a bit. So it's always been rewarding to know that our videos are out there actually doing good. So that's been really rewarding. And I've gotten a lot of business through contacts, just like you guys. You guys have been amazing at helping me to connect with some of the people that, that you work with here locally and, and beyond. We just finished a project for Boys and Girls Club of Long Beach here, their promo video for the year. And they really love it. They've been using it to actually get grants and things like that right away. And the great news is they actually are going to have us come in again at the beginning of 2024 and help them create a video for their big uh, gala event that they're going to be doing in the next couple of months. Okay, great. How about you, Anna? This past year has been a banner year for Caught in the Moment, and I'm really excited that we are coming to the close of it. And our work has taken us far and wide and, and still local. It's fun, Mike, to hear you talk about how you enjoy working locally. And we certainly do as well. Long Beach and Southern California are definitely our home. Most of our business these past few years have been large scale events, including conferences and annual meetings for associations, some profit, some nonprofit. And we love it because year after year, we were traveling with these clients and mostly it's in the US, but occasionally we get to venture out a little further. And I know for our growth potential, adding video to our offerings for our clients is something that we're also very excited about and certainly happy to know Mike. And actually Mike and I have known each other probably for decades, <laughs> going back to our roots where we were doing lots and lots of weddings. But I think for both of us, our careers have shifted and now we're focused a lot on corporate clients and yeah, just spreading our news and influence this way and, and marketing as much as we can for our clients and offering both photo and video has been a big boost for our business. So that, that focus going into next year, would you say it'd be more, more of the same as far as what, what you mentioned? 
regarding travel and conferences and things like that? Yes, exactly. Um, I know we'll get to be talking about power partners, but for us, meeting planners have been a great boost for our business. So the more meeting planners we know and meeting planning businesses that plan out all of the conferences for their associations who may be too small to have their own meeting planner or own in-house photographer, we love to work with those types of people because they have multiple clients and they'll bring us out to multiple cities throughout the year for their, their jobs. Great, great. Well, I'm going to jump in here too as dual role. I'm the host of this Power Partner podcast, but also we own iTrust Marketing and we're a marketing agency. We we do web graphic design, print, and we've collaborated with, with both of you. And so I think for next year, our our marketing agency is 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 well established. My wife and I, Deborah, but we're focusing on this relationship aspect of marketing. So that's what we're looking to do in 2024. And I think that will help us as well as our collaborative partners. So I just wanted to mention how, and we'll get into it, how we work with each other. But I just also wanted to bring up this, this idea because I think branding is very important and you both have great brands and logos. Can you, Mike, can you kind of explain the, the background, how you came up with Wolfgang Media? Um, my middle name is actually Wolfgang. So it's sort of a natural fit. And of course, my first name is Michael or people call me Mike. And the truth is, how many Mikes have you met in your, your life, right? Probably <laughs> hundreds, right? Yeah. But how many Wolfgangs have you met? So that was actually my uncle's first name. That's my middle name. And I, I don't know, I think, uh, you know, the logo with the, the wolf in the middle of it is pretty self-explanatory when it's something it's sort of like when I hand the card over, people seem to kind of remember it instead of putting too much information on the card. It's really just got on the one side, the big W and the big wolf. So when you get the card or you see it and, you know, people tell me anyway, they tend to remember it. Why, <laughs> why is there no space between the wolf gang and the media? I kind of wanted it to be really similar to the website, which is wolfgangmedia.com. So I, I thought that way, well, we'll just make it one one word, wolfgangmedia.com, and I'll just make the the name of the business the same same thing. Interesting. <laughs> and then Lana, how did, how did you come up with Caught in the Moment Photography? Well, long, long ago on 2nd Street, when there used to be a, a singular wireless store, <laughs> we went to get our first cell phone and we were just starting our business as well. And I thought, well... We have a number now. Now we need a name for our business. And literally, it took me 20 paces out the door and down Second Street. We were probably going for a bite to eat. I said, well, the kind of photos that we really think make us shine and set us apart from the others are those that people don't even know we're taking when they're caught in the moment. Like, caught in the moment. There you go. <laughs> that is and, and it works for social. It works for weddings. It works for corporate. Yeah, just trying trying to ring true to what the story that we're telling through photos. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Well, also very interesting. I love it. Regarding power partnerships, Power Partners USA is about making introductions that lead to referral business or collaboration. I have known each of you separately for a while, and I was happy to hear that you've been collaborating. It's a great example of how power partner relationships are synergistic and benefit each other. Can you describe what works between you two? For instance, Michael, how has working with Cotton Moment Photography benefited your business? Well, I think, you know, Lana and Sal have been out there for a long time, and they just have really built some great connections and relationships. And that's really what it's all about. And uh, I think just also their personalities, uh, we tend to mix, I think, pretty well. We're trying to offer the client something, I think, that is sort of low stress and, you know, two brands that are really easy to work with and uh, are open to figuring out what the client wants and working together to get that. And maybe even adding some other ideas that the client didn't think of before. So I think the collaboration and the connections that we both have might even be in different worlds or different parts of what we do. So it's great to be able to bring in each other as really like added value to the client. The fact that, hey, you might not just get video, but how about photo or, or the other way around? 
and offering a package that they don't have to book separately, you know, to know that, hey, these guys work together and it's seamless and we're going to get something that we're really happy to have as an end product. So. And, and Lana, how is, what ways do collaborations with Wolfgang Media enhance your client services? Sure. I would say that our business has always grown based on our clients' needs. A client will ask something and if we don't offer it right away, like we have to think, how can we help this client? <laughs> and photo and video seem to be a perfect marriage. Certainly we have tried it on our own. And I'll say that if you're a trained photographer, you need more training if you're going to be a videographer. <laughs> so if you want to jump in, you really do need a power partner like Mike and Wolfgang Media because they make us look so much better than we look on our own <laughs> with regard to video. And as Mike was saying, it just adds so much more value to your client. If, if you can't do it yourself, if you have a network of people that you trust and know their work and you can offer them up as resources, you're going to be so golden. Just keep, It just keeps the, the ball rolling, basically. And, and it keeps your clients wanting to come back to you, even if, if they know you don't necessarily provide that particular service, they trust you and know that you can provide it one way or another through your partnerships. Well, yeah. Let me let me ask this based on what Lana just said is like, what is the differentiating differentiation line drawn that causes collaboration to come into play? Because, you know, cameras today, I, I think, I believe can do video and photography. So people might try to get away with one or the other. In your case, where does that line come where you know that you need each other separate expertise? Yeah. Can I answer that one, Mike, first, if you don't mind? <laughs> uh, I'll just say, yes, cameras can do video. And yes, cameras can do photo for the most part. And your phone can do both. But there are certain techniques that a photographer might not know to, to capture specific views, angles, motion through videography. And what really brought us to Michael was his editing expertise. Because yeah, we might have great little snippets, but oh my goodness, how do we put them together into a coherent story in 60 seconds to tell all that happened in four days of a giant conference with everything from exhibit halls to testimonial interviews to people speaking on stage with keynotes and all the networking and everything that happens. How do you tell that in 60 seconds with cool music? You ask Wolfgang Media, basically. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. I, I, I don't think that's obvious to people. And so I wanted to, you know, because in my case as a marketing agency, I I definitely don't know photography um, at, or videography. And we need that for websites. So we've referred out, we've worked with Cotton Moment Photography for sending them. People say, well, I need a headshot. Well, we could go take a headshot, but we send them to the professional to work one-on-one -on -one with that client in the right way. Same with videography. There's no way that we're going to pull together a video of inequality that like a client would need. And in both instances, we tell the clients they need video. They need, we definitely need good photography to, to make the website stand out. It really makes or breaks what we do as a marketing agency. So that's how we collaborate in with both of your professions. Yeah, and if I can add on to, to what you're saying, I think both photography and videography as media need people who can connect almost immediately with whoever's being photographed or recorded because so often, I would say 90% plus of people do not want their picture taken. They do not want to be on video. It's almost, this, you know, it's like public speaking. People would rather die. <laughs> but if you're going to promote your business, especially if you're a small business, you need to have photos of you doing your business, good photos of your, you know, your headshot, like you mentioned. You need great videos of your brand in action. And in order to capture those, you really need to be able to connect with whoever is behind the camera. And that's another reason we really enjoy working with Michael, because he knows people. He knows how to make them feel at ease, answer questions and look natural in a format that they, yeah, rather be jumping off a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's really true. And 
I think Lana and I both know there, there are a lot of people that can do video. There's a lot of people that can do photography, like the technical aspect of it, right? I mean, the cameras are available, the equipment's available, but you know, when you do these live conferences and you work with a million different personalities, you really, like Lana said, have to connect with them almost instantly. A quick joke or just a little antidote or just kind of a funny little something can make all the difference in getting getting the shot. And, you know, honestly, sometimes you got to, hey, would you guys do that one more time? Let me get a little smile over here. Just, you know, just to capture it, because sometimes when it happens live, you get it, but you want to get it sometimes one more time from a different angle, because, you know, it's going to make all the difference in the edit or the way that the photos or the video comes out. So you kind of have to, in a sense, you know, capture that moment because, you know, in the end, you know, it's going to make such a big difference in the way it comes out. And people don't always know that live. They don't always know it. And so you kind of have to know it before they do. Yeah. Um, sometimes you make the moment. If you cannot, <laughs> if it can't be caught in the moment, you make the moment. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you do. And it's, uh, you know, these conferences, we cover a lot of ground, right? I mean, I don't know how big that the show flows are like acres and acres. Right. And I just want to bring up the fact sometimes I kind of feel even good because I know in a sense, we're a bit of a backup for each other. Right. It's like, I may not capture something from this particular angle at this particular time, but maybe Lana and Sal do in photographs. And same with me on video. It's sort of a good backup. It's like, hey, if we ever had to pull a still from video just to capture that moment, because that's where I happen to be, or vice versa, if I had to make some kind of mini photo montage from some great photos that they capture to integrate into the video, it's just a nice little backup because we're capturing something live and you can't control every single aspect of it sometimes well, you know well, it's such a big place to cover let's let's back up a little bit because and 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 dive more into what you're saying because you both well worked on a con at a conference in San Antonio and so i wanted to kind of dive into what each of your roles were first so we can give a little background of like, how did this, what was this conference and what, it, what was your responsibilities? Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll start. let Lana soon. start. She, she, <laughs> she. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, the client was Irrigation Association. So it's everything from using reclaimed water for golf courses to schools, any kind of irrigation use. And they've been clients of ours for a very long time. Um, years and years. And the past couple of years, they'd asked us for video and just, you know, small snippets here and there, which we could handle no problem. And then they started wanting interviews and then they started wanting um, a recap video, which we call a sizzle reel, kind of showcasing everything that happened. Like, well, now it might be time <laughs> to expand and, and bring Wolfgang Media in, which we did. And basically it's white label service for this particular client, which means Mike does the video, but it is branded under caught in the moment. So I handle everything that is customer service related and delivery related, as well as anything photography related. Um, but the actual capture of the video, we did rely on Mike and we did do a lot of planning before this conference because it was a multi-day, multi-aspect. You have to know where you're going and you have to be there on time <laughs> and you have to be able to check all the boxes because it's not something that gets repeated. You don't get a second chance for most of the events that were happening. So um, the client and I made a schedule and then Mike and I went over it line by line. And even at the end of every day, we kind of said, okay, did you get this? Do we do this? And during the day, are you going to be here? Great. It's perfect. So it was um, great communication throughout the entire process from start to finish. And so, Mike, what was your role going in? Yeah. So basically, I was capturing um, candid's really like candid video throughout the uh, throughout the event, plus interviews with the whole mindset of, OK, they're not only going to get the raw footage, but hopefully they're going to want us to edit as well. And that's really kind of a choice is like, do they want us to edit or not? It's a good choice for them, I think, because we'll know the footage really well. So basically, I had that whole schedule. Lana and I went over everything as to what they wanted. 
the other thing that really helped is, you know, I try to get down to the show floor early before it opens. And that makes a big difference. And I know Lana and Sal are really into being on time as well. And also not just on time, but early. When you say on time, really what you mean is as, as a professional, you want to be there early. So that made a big difference to be able to walk the show floor and basically get a preview of where everything's going to be before all the chaos starts, before all the activities start going. So that makes a big difference in being able to capture something like that. So that's the, kind of the logistics and the to ensure the smor- smooth workflow for the client is the preparation. Is that can I say is that correct? It's a big part of it. Yeah, for sure. And then being on time. So, mm-hmm. um, Mike, like, did you have to adapt your shooting or editing style when collaborating on something like this? You know, like because it's not. Like Lana has to explain what the client wants. So how how does that back and forth go? Sure. Yeah. I mean, um, pretty much use my instinct and how I normally cover an event. I think the difference was, is that the clients want a little bit different type of deliverables than that I always do. They really want the clips individually as opposed to a big chunk. So kind of worked on dialing that in as to exactly what they want in the end, as far as raw footage. One thing I was mentioned too, is no matter how much you prepare, and how much you get there early and and go over things, there's always that flexibility that you've got to have. For example, in this irrigation conference, you know, I was going down the line making sure I got everything, but all of a sudden the client came up to me and said, hey, when I got a text, I think from Lon and Sal, hey, we need you over here. There's going to be this announcement, this check that's going to be given, really important. You need to stop whatever you're doing and be over here. And granted, um, it ended up, I was there kind of early. So there's a trade-off because you can only be so many places at once. But the bottom line is it was super important to the client to get that check being handed over. So whatever we were doing, we sort of adjusted then and there to make sure we were there for that particular moment. Because the bottom line is we want to make the client happy and capture what they want. It's a lot of thinking on your feet, being flexible, right? Yes. Um, so Lana, in a conference like this, or um, how many people are on your team? specifically like this one in San Antonio, how many people were on the team? Um, There were three of us total. I was uh, doing headshots, which I love to do, rapid fire headshots on the exhibit floor hall. (laughs) And Salvador was running around getting candid photos and Mike was doing the video. Okay, good. So have you had conferences where you have more people on the team or is it usually just a, a, it can be a three person job? Um, The number of people varies greatly for us. We've done conferences with just one person. Some are very small um, and one person is completely fine. Others, we've had up to seven people where we're doing a lot of different things all at the same time. So yeah, we we definitely flex and and grow as needed and shrink as needed. And and I'm curious, like when you have like seven, like multiple photographers and videographers, um, do any issues or problems come up that that you as the overseer of the project, the project manager, the producer, whatever, or any creative differences? Did anybody go rogue on you or is everything, is, is everybody, how, how would you explain issues you might come up against? Well, I would say we work with people that are pre-qualified. Like we know, first of all, the, the personality of the person is, the most important thing, higher than even technical skill, because as Mike mentioned, things happen. You can plan as well as you want to, but things happen. And the way that you deal with making adjustments and being flexible really does show to the client what you're made of. So I want to make sure everybody's always happy, (laughs) always has a great attitude and doesn't mind being flexible. And as far as style, um, we we always try to show our team what we're looking for and what we hope to achieve so that they have a style guide to have in the back of their mind. And conveying what is important to the client is also very important to us because, yeah, we don't want the, to arrive at the end of the day and realize we didn't get what they were asking. Like, no, what, what they're asking comes first. That's what we always do, give the client what they want and then give the client what we think they want. And sometimes they like that better and sometimes they wanted what they wanted. Well, <laughs> Either way, we're, you know, we always 
<laughs> are being sure that we deliver what's expected and more. And and that's that was my other question too is regarding the client is like have you had any pushback if anybody on what you were delivering, um, or uh, like who who is your client? Is in in this case is it the the association or is it like a an event planner? Well, I see everybody as our clients. Um, the person who writes the check is generally the person in charge of the association, if it's mm -hmm. a conference like that. However, if they're working with a meeting planner, they might be our first point of contact. But we also work with their board of directors that are on site at the conference. We also work with their attendees. We're taking their picture. They see us, we see them the exhibitors, the sponsors who all pay money to be at those conferences. And we want to showcase their brand. Well, we want to make sure we get great marketing images for them. So honestly, every face that goes in front of my camera is a client and that's how I see it. As far as I trust marketing goes in collaborating, the client can be a sensitive issue where in, in your case, Lana, in that project, you're responsible to the client. A lot of times in my case, I'm responsible to the client to get the footage, the the photos. And so I guess it's up to us to make sure the client is getting what they want. And it's up to us also to make sure everybody's on the same page. And it sounds like you guys are work well together. It's obvious, but when you have new hires, is there, and, and I'm not asking like how much you pay or anything, but is there a, a, a difference between project and hourly rate with, with new hires? And then is there any difference between the rate and the quality they are providing? And maybe how that works between you guys too, because I'm, I've just been listening to rough cut a podcast on videography and trying to get more information. And it's like, there's a lot to uh, keeping everybody happy. How do you manage that? I could say a little bit. Um... Sometimes if they're trying something new like videography, we do try to give them an introductory rate so they don't feel they're sticking their neck out without knowing what they're going to have in the end. And then once they're amazingly happy with it, of course, then we would bring our rate up to our normal rate. Um, and as far as the people on our team that we work with, I, I really just try to be fair. And if, if I keep everybody at the same, and which is normally a bit more than they would normally earn from maybe other sources, keep them happy. They keep wanting to work with us and the clients are happy too. Right. And so Mike, like in, in your case on, even with your clients or collaborating, how do you come up with a rate? How do you, you know, I'm, I'm asking also from an agency standpoint to, to learn how to work with both of you and saying, look, I know you have quality and I know there's a cost. Um, but not all videographers and not all photographers are the same. And um, I was wondering too, if somebody gives you a lower rate, that doesn't mean the quality is necessarily lower. I mean, how do you how do you position yourself or how should videographers and photographers position themselves regarding rates? Yeah, I think it's always kind of a difficult uh, balancing act to get that just right. You know, in the projects that Lana and I've worked together, really Lana kind of says, okay, well, here's kind of where we're at with video and what the client can can do. And that's really what we we try to aim for. And like she says, we want them to also, since video is sometimes relatively new to them, um, is we really want to wow them. We want to give them basically more than they more than they bargain for, give them more value for their money. And sometimes that can come from editing, you know, is like we uh, come up with a day rate for shooting, for filming a project. And in this case, we've got, I don't know, 12 interviews and four hours of raw footage. So there's a really big combination or a fairly big combination on ways that that can be edited. So we try to come up with sort of like different levels of editing, different levels of post-production where it's like, okay, level A is pretty basic, 60 second. Level B is sort of middle of the road. We're going to integrate some of the audio from the conference because that takes a lot of time to go through all the audio. And let's say level C or the third one down is like, okay, this is everything. This is going through all the audio 
using potential sound bites from everything and intermixing all the footage into a bigger, more comprehensive video. And that way it gives the client some choices to make, you know, and maybe they start with level A and realize, hey, you know what? I think maybe we should do the next level up and do something better. So I think there's always room to um, improve and give them something more than they originally thought in their mind. So Lana, in that case, you, you have to know that going in regarding what Michael's prepared or able to deliver in your budgeting. Are you always comfortable with, because it's always my issue with the client is how much do they have to spend that I can afford everything? including our own time plus uh, Michael's time, for instance. How is that handled? Yeah, so <laughs> we do have a little bit of an idea of what our clients' budgets are for certain things. And even whenever I have a new client or new pr prospect asking me for a quote, I'm always, oh, well, what's, what's your spend history? What are you used to spending? And what are you used to getting? And how can we work with that because I don't I never want to be out of someone's budget. So it, it is nice to have different levels of service. Um, where Mike said maybe they're going to just get clips of the videos and they're going to do their own editing. Maybe they have, you know, maybe that's all they can afford. Um, but maybe they can do a little bit better and have a nice finished product out the door. That's the that's the ideal case. And uh, yeah, putting out feelers is important. And also when we're working with other photographers on our team that we bring in like for a specific project or other videographers, um, I think it depends what we're gonna pay them also on what they're delivering for us. Cause some photographers, I just want, okay, go take the photos. I'm gonna do the editing. I'm gonna put it online. All you, your only investment really is your time that you're being there. So an hourly rate makes a, a great sense for them. And um what else do I want to say? Just trying to be fair about that. Because the other thing is they didn't have to go out and, and get that job. I did. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I spent all the time marketing the phone calls, the emails, you know, being members of all these different associations to, to make that initial contact. So if all you have to do is show up and, you know, do your job and, and go home, then it's it's definitely a different value than if you're packaging everything together and delivering a finished product and so, maintaining relationships. So what advice would both of you give me as a marketing agency looking to work with you as, as how to include, or what should I tell know to tell my client regarding, look, you want quality for, uh, videography, you want quality photography, we can get that. But, you know, um, should there be a checklist or something that a marketing agency should have from you so that we can budget properly for your time and efforts? Yeah, I think <laughs> I think probably the more information you can get from the client, the better. And sometimes the hard part is they don't really know yet. You know, that's probably the hardest part is like they know they want good video. They probably know they want good photography, but sometimes they don't quite know what it is yet. So sometimes it's up to us to maybe make some really good educated guesses as to what's going to work the best for them. And sometimes, I mean, in the past with clients, I'll say, hey, have me start on just a smaller project so you can kind of see what we can do. They don't have a budget for a big full like promo video. Have me come out and film like one event or do one video and create something. And it kind of gives sometimes a starting point as to building that relationship and building it into something much bigger, building into something that you're going to film with them like throughout the year or that sort of thing. I um, would, I would yeah. echo that. I think um, having a long timeline with the client and possibly different levels of service to start out, like Michael said, to build trust and prioritize with them. What are you going to start with? Are you starting with a website? What do you absolutely need to make a decent landing page, start with that, and then kind of build out. And they'll see over time whether it's paying off or not and whether it's worth the investment. But so many people use stock footage, stock video as well these days. Um, and I think any 
person going online and searching for something, they know if it's a stock fake photo or if it's a sincere, oh, this is, this is the owner. Those are their real clients. That's their storefront. That's their product. It just makes it so much more important because we all want to support our local businesses, especially lo local small businesses and being authentic, using your authentic voice is I think the best thing you can do to grow your business. Well, in my case as a marketing agency, I, I try to get as much information as the client, both for um, to pass on to you so that you can come up with a, a price. Is there a time or like, is it kind of advisable sometimes where you talk to the client and kind of get out what 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 it might really entail? I know I've talked with <laughs> Michael one time about doing a video on boats and with drones and everything like that. It's like, it's way above what I could uh, understand how to budget. So um, I think that's an example where Michael would have to talk with a client to to really understand the project, right? Yeah, I think int introductory Zoom calls are always a good idea. And also as, as a marketing professional, Alan, and if you have multiple clients that might need the same thing as the service provider, I'm going to be happier and offer better rates if I see a lot of work versus like a one-off here, a one-off there. So that might be something that you consider as well. Well, let, let's let's go into a little bit about non-collaboration referrals. Um, for Mike, Michael, can you can you share examples of referral business with um, caught in the moment or I trust marketing and how it benefited you, where it wasn't necessarily collaboration? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, actually, one of them that that you would connect me with is, uh, you know, Pam from Paws LA and her um, her uh, Chirp nonprofit as well. And that became a really great project a few years, a few years ago. What was nice about it, too, is that um, it was kind of a series of five. I think it was five educational videos that they wanted. And I was able to use a contact that I had with another local business, uh, which is the um, the uh, the theater here in Long Beach. And it happened to be like in the middle of, of COVID, actually, where the theater had space availability. So it actually was just really good timing because it gave the theater a project because we came in there and filmed. And, you know, it had availability to film those scenes that we really needed a stage and backdrop and room to film it. So, and that all started because of you, you connected me with, um, you know, with your client that you've worked with for years. And then I was able to connect with a theater that I'd actually filmed in before to get that space to do the project. So that was just, you know, one example. Well, and like I said, we had like no input into that project. And, um, and that's how I am with even projects that you're on is like, I rely on you to do your thing uh, and stay out of the way. But we're definitely, we didn't have anything to do with that other than the referral. Glad that worked out for you. Um, and then Lana, for kind of photography, what business professionals do tend to give you repeat referrals or how have you been giving and getting referrals to, to other businesses? Sure. Well, people like yourself, marketing professionals, um, website designers, Anyone who is helping promote other small businesses make their make their mark are great at referring us for professional headshots, executive portraits, um, even going on site to their offices to do some environmental work. Those are our local small business type great referrals. Um, we have a lot of accounting firms, um, some engineering firms that every time they get a new hire, they send them our way so they get a nice headshot. And they use those those pictures to promote the new employees to their clients and building their own business as, as well. I mentioned meeting planners earlier. They're a wonderful source of repeat business because most of them have clients that will do things at least annually, sometimes two or three things each year. Uh, yeah, any kind of coordinators. Uh, so we still do weddings. So wedding coordinators are always great catering uh, managers and I would say communication managers at different businesses as well. 
and HR managers too, because sometimes they're the ones who are planning the events for the company or needing the headshots for their employees. Yeah. And I would add in also just like the location itself, right? If there's like a hotel that we've worked at before and they really like our work, um, I've gotten business that way as well. And I sh I'm sure you have too, right, Lana, where it's like the hotel that does, you know, a lot of meetings or conferences and then the, someone else comes in and the hotel refers you, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we're, Hotels we're with big ballrooms. <laughs> yes. That's a big plus. And also, you know, if you happen to capture some great footage of the hotel from the outside and people enjoying it, sometimes you kind of get double usage is you ask the client, hey, would you mind if I shared some of this with the hotel so they could show off their location with your great event? And it becomes a win-win because now the location gets to show off, oh, we had, you know, this event here and look how happy and how well it worked. So you can really kind of um, get double usage out of sometimes the same footage. Okay, so I can get this straight. Um, to summarize, the the power partners or the people who give you repeat business, um, starting with Lana again, could you just list them off? Yes. Meeting planners, HR professionals, marketing and communication managers and directors. And Michael? Yes, I would say, you know, similar list to Lana's as well. And really, you know, small business owners, I would say even like um, real estate, people in finance as well. Um, and also, like I mentioned, uh, people that work at locations, like nice hotels and things like that are also great contacts to have. Great, great. And then how, how can we educate other uh, videographers and photographers about the benefits of power partnerships? Do you, do you see a lot of this going on and with other people in your business building collaborative relationships like you have? I know in, in my world, we have a lot of great friends who are also photographers that have been in business a long time, and we all do try to support one another. Um, so yes, I, I would say we, ha we have a strong network that way. And I always try to advocate for them to charge what they're worth to their clients. I know photography, you can always find someone cheaper, but can you ever find someone better? <laughs> So I just try to make sure everybody is standing up for themselves because I think a lot of people will bend to pressure and we really do need to value what we're providing. Well, I also have seen your portfolio on your websites, both of you, and they're very strong. I, I think that that shows, you know, is that one of your better marketing tools or how do you, besides, you know, referrals, how else do you market yourselves? Yeah, I think um, probably Lana and I maybe do it similar is like, you know, a really strong website, some strong social media, so you can really show off your work. I think what really helps is if you, you know, if the co client contacts you for a potential job, if you can show them something that's really similar to theirs, it's going to be a big plus. Yeah. So, you know, if it's a conference and they want candidates, and maybe it's a similar style conference. I think that's a big plus because sometimes people don't have the biggest imagination. They don't know exactly what they want. They don't, they just know they want it to look good, <laughs> but they don't know what it is. They, they want it to pop. They want it to pop, right? They have their <laughs> keywords, whatever it is. But if you can say, hey, here's a conference pretty similar to yours. Um, here's a candidates. Here's a one minute. Take a look. And sometimes just them seeing that video or just seeing those photographs are like, yeah, that's it. That's what we want. We just didn't know the words to say it. That's what we want. We want people looking natural. We want them shaking hands. We want them looking like they're enjoying themselves. We don't want it to be boring. <laughs> All those things that maybe they couldn't quite put into words. If they see it, um, then that makes all the difference. Um, and for, for me, I would say uh, definitely the largest source of referrals come from networking organizations that we belong to. However, Google, Uncle Google, <laughs> if you get your search engine optimization fine-tuned, that will serve you very well because I do get calls all the time and I always ask, how'd you hear about us? And sometimes it's just a Google search. Well, that's great. I mean, I think that that lends to the the your work on, on the website itself. 
it's very powerful. Um, we'll have in our show notes links to uh, both your websites so people can see that. But let's talk about what's coming up in the future. Are there any projects or areas for potential for further collaboration, experimentation with new ideas or technologies that you guys are working on? Uh, particularly like drone drone uh, photography or video seems to be a, a growing trend, right? Yeah, it's true. Um, I actually, I've got a drone that I'm really impressed with. It's actually, it's got some self-following capabilities. So it's really good with like sports and things like that or following fast action. Um, but truthfully, personally, I don't have enough experience with it yet to want to go out and fly it for jobs. So I've got a drone person that I can bring in and kind of add to the team. And that's what he specializes in is really amazing drone shots. And it's a really good compliment to the video that I get on the ground. So again, it's like, if you can't, if you don't think you can quite do it yourself, bring in the right person to be part of your team, just like Lana and I have done with video and photography. One thing I'll tell you, a new toy that I did get was a miniature um, gimbal. And I think everyone has seen these bigger gimbals, the camera and the whole thing, and you've got to balance it and all these things, and you can get some amazing shots. With these conferences, I was just thinking ahead, you've got to be so quick. And I'm also shooting with another big camera. I got this miniature gimbal and it's actually fits in your pocket, which is amazing. And it, you know, at first glance, you're like, oh, that's just a toy. But the truth is it has a big one inch sensor on it. It can shoot up to 4K if you need it. But it's this little thing that looks like a toy, but you can get amazing shots out of it. And so I actually was using it on these recent jobs and I was really happy with the shots I was able to pull off because I was able to pull it out and use it in addition to my main camera without having to do all this technical balancing and things. I could still get some amazing candid shots with this mini gimbal. So it, I tr does yeah. the gimbal, what, what is it? What is its purpose to it's keep purpose things is, level or? It, the purpose is to get movement shots. So if you're going to kind of follow people into like a big conference, into a show, and they're all walking in and you want to walk with them or you want to walk in reverse and follow them in and you want to take out all the jitter of like you stepping, you know, to follow them or moving behind an object. It's kind of like these gliding shots, these smooth gliding shots that really add, I think, a lot of like cinematic value. Um, normally you'd need this, you know, this giant bit of equipment, but this little mini gimbal has really gotten dialed in in the last couple of years. And I'm really pretty happy with what I can do with it. And then Lana, how about you? How's the future looking? Um, any new ideas or things that you're going to spring on people going forward? <laughs> <laughs> well, as, aside from offering video on a much more um, common basis, frequent basis, I also want to incorporate some technology for those headshots that I do on exhibit hall floors where literally it's 20, 30 seconds per person that I'm doing a professional portrait for. I want to be able for them to get their photo right to it instead of having to scroll through a gallery to find their photo. And with that, I have the opportunity to upsell retouching on an individual basis. And I think I have more likelihood that they will find their photo and actually purchase retouching afterwards. So that's something I'm, I know it sounds little, but it, it has the potential to be something a lot bigger. I, I think that's huge because I have yet to receive a photo that I took at a headshot photo at one of these events. <laughs> I mean- But it wasn't by me. <laughs> I know, that's like, what is your percentage of completion rate? Is it near a hundred? Is it a hundred percent? I'm serious. Like you, how do you get the photo? Like you're saying that, that to, right now you have to go through a gallery, pick your photo and then it gets delivered to you. Right. Um, we never got that option. Mm. The guy takes a photo. Um, you know, I, I, I have scrolled and found it, but I never really got the photo. How do you assure that? And going forward, you're saying it's going to be easier, right? Well, I think it'd just be easier to find your specific photo, but I always am very uh, focused on communicating well. Like I said, anybody who comes in front of my camera is a client. So I will have a gallery pre-made before the event 
and I'll have a QR code and I'll spell out the entire website where those photos will be. And I have people take a picture of a sign that has that information before they get their picture taken by me. And I say, hey, you know, on whatever day these pictures are being promised, you can go hold down that QR code. It'll open up the gallery and you can find your photo. And they just download it? Yes. Yeah, always. And honestly, it's also a good sponsorship opportunity because a lot of times the headshot station will be sponsored by a company mm -hmm. and I brand every photo with their logo. The logo disappears once it's downloaded, but when they go to the website, they'll see, oh, a headshot sponsored by so-and-so. And there can even be a link to that sponsor's website. And then every photo will have that little logo. They download it. It becomes a usable headshot because the logo disappears. But extra, extra touch points uh, give value to those sponsors. And I, they are always thrilled with the results of how many people came through for headshots and then how many times they get to re be remembered. How many headshots do you think you took in San Antonio? Um, let's see, in a day, about 200. Is that typical? Is that, is that a lot? It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> sure you can handle it. I'm sure you can handle it.